Hello everyone, Power Query again. Power Query is not limited for complicated problems. It can be used to solve a simple problem. Today, I want to solve a problem. I want to know when this file was last modified. Indeed, we can get the information from file info, and we can see it here. This file was last modified today. 5:46 p.m. However, for some reason, I want these pieces of information to be appeared on the web sheet. So, what we can do with Power Query? Let's have a look. By the way, let me also copy the path of this file. You will see why I'm going to copy it. Why not? Going back to my spreadsheet, go to the Data tab. Get data from file, from folder. This is where I need the file path. I'm going to paste what I copy here, but I don't need the file name. I just want the folder. So let me remove the file name and leave the folder here. Open. Now this is a preview of all the contents in the folder. I'm going to get transform data. The Power Query Editor opened. See that? We see all the content in that folder, but what we care is this column, date modified. And what I care is just the workbook I'm working with. So I'm going to select the workbook that I want. This one, sample file, get data modified Excel. Pay attention to this one. This is a phantom file of the same files when it is opened in the folder. Make sure you do not check this one. Check only this one. Okay? Okay. Now we are having only one file remained in the folder. And what we care is the date modify. So that I right click, remove other columns, and I am ready. To close and load it. Let me close and load to. I want to load it to a table on existing worksheet on the cell A1. Okay. Bingo. There we go. However, this result, let me make it bigger. This result is a stated one. That means for example, I'm going to save the file right now. Save. The time is 5.50. You can see that this will not be updated until I write it and refresh the query. Refresh. Now it is updated. But this is not ideal, not ideal at all. We don't have to update this information every minute. At least, we want to see this information updated when the file is opened, right? If this is the case, that is a simple trick. What we can do is to right-click on the query here, go to the properties. Now, pay attention to here. Refresh data when opening the files. OK, as simple as this. Okay, now the clock is 551, 551. Let me save the file again. Save. In this file, the date modified, the time is still 550 p.m. So I'm going to close the file. And then I'm going to open the file again. Open. This is the file. Well, the file is opened. The information is not yet updated because we have to enable the content. Then, there we go. The query is updated. From now on, whenever we open this file, the query will be updated. So this is the query that we just made. I will name it to standard. I want to go back to the Power Query Editor to show you to highlight one point. If we go back to the first step, the source, we can see that under the function 
folder dot files. This is a hard coded text string, which is the folder path of the file. In the second step, filter rules where we select the file. This portion is also hard coded. That means if we try to rename the file or we move it to another location, this query will not work because it is always pointing to the exact location. We want to make it dynamic. We can do it with the help of a Russian function. Let's see how we can do it. Close the query first, going back to the webbook. Okay, in any cell, we can use the function cell, open parenthesis, open parenthesis, and then we can see that from the menu file named close parenthesis. This is the function to get the full file path of the current workbook. Now we can go to this cell, right click, get data from within sheet to load this information into Power Query Editor. We may also go to data from within sheet or from table or range, depends on the versions of Excel you're using. Okay, now let me load it into the Power Query Editor. Let me rename this as Dynamic. And I don't want the final step. I don't even want the second step for more headers. I just want to get the full path here. With this full path, I can indeed get the folder path and the file name separately. And then we can make it dynamic. Okay, let's see how we can do it. Go to Transform tab, Extract. Let's extract the file portion, uh, the file name first. So I will see that test between delimiters. Obviously, the start delimiter will be the opened square bracket, and the end delimiter will be the closed square bracket. As simple as that. Okay. Bring. We have extracted the file name successfully without any formula. But I don't want it as a table. I want it as a test. So I'm going to right click, drill down. So it will be stored as a test. For this step, I would like to rename it to file name. You will see why. It is super logical. Now I want to go back to the source. I want to, based on this step, get the folder path. So I'm going to transform tab again, extract. This time I will select test before delimiter. I'm going to insert one step here. Yes. And the delimiter is the backward slash. I want to open the advanced options, select from the end of the input. OK. Now I have the folder path. However, pay attention. Because we have inserted one step before this one, actually, there are some consequences. By default, all the steps will reference to the previous step. Now the previous step has changed. Originally, it is pointing to the step of source instead of this step. This is the extracted test before delimiter. To tackle that, I will go back to this second step and move it to the final step. I move it to the final step. Now, I've got a message saying that, oh, we cannot convert the value sample file to blah, 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 blah. OK, but the point is, take a look at this formula. This formula is referencing to the step file named, which is not correct. We can simply correct it to the first step, which is the source, and then check the tick. Now I have the photo path. Let's go back and check. The second step is referencing to source. It is getting the file name. It is working fine. The final step is also referencing to the source. It is getting the folder path. It is working fine. Now, right click on this output. I want to turn it into a test. So I'm going to select 
do that. So now I have the folder path as the test, and I'm going to rename this to folder path. Okay. Now both the folder path and file is dynamic based on the value from the Rashid cell. Now let me borrow the code from the query status. I want to copy the first step, the source, which is how to read all the files from a folder. I'm going to copy the entire folder, the entire formula, go back to the dynamic query, make sure we are at the final step here. I'm going to create or add a new step. Then I will simply paste what I have just copied. Before I hit enter, I want to turn this folder path into the dynamic one, which I name it as folder path. Folder path. Okay, as simple as that. Now we are looking into the folder that is coming from the Rush function on the Rush it. Okay, that is dynamic. The second step, now we can continue on is to filter the file to select the filter we, are, we want. I can select anyone. It doesn't really matter at this point. Okay. When I select the folder, I've got this formula. And this is also hard coded. What I want is to rename this hard coded test string into the dynamic file name that we created before based on the result coming from the Russian function. Okay. So now we have these two steps referencing to a dynamic information. It is a dynamic information. That means when we save the file into a different folder or we rename the folder, the query will still work. Let's prove it. But before we prove it, let's do all the job. We want to look at the date modified. So right click here, we move other columns. I'm going to close and load. I will select close and load to because I want it to be side by side with the first query. So I am going to select existing worksheet. I want it to be loaded to C1. Okay. Cool. Why this is still the same answer? Let me refresh it. Refresh. Of course, it is the same. I haven't saved this file yet. Okay, so let me save the file. File, save without changing the file name, without changing the file uh, location. I just save it, and then let me close the file. And then I'm going to reopen the file. Now I'm going to reopen the file, which is this one. Pay attention, the query is now updating. And there we go. This one is successfully updated. This one is not. Do you remember we have a little trick at the end? That is the trick to make sure the query will be refreshed when it is opened. So we need to go back to the queries and connections, right click, properties, make sure to check this box, refresh data when opening the file. There we go. Now when I close it and reopen it, it should be update, just like what it did here. It did update. Now I want to save the file as a new file name, okay, to see whether the query is still working. Version 1. Save. Okay, this function is not returning the new file name. However, when I close the workbook, when I reopen it, it should be updated. And so the power query. Pay attention to the save term here. This is 
642. I'm going to save the file again, save. Close it. Now I'm going to reopen it. This one, version one. Remember, before everything is updated, we need to enable content because this is a new file. When I enable the content, everything will be working. Bingo 642.